And we're back for the final episode in this series where I finally put this map to sleep. Uh, I've decided to call this map uh, Slideshow Tower because it's <laughs> it has really become a very slow map to play. Uh, last I checked, so long as I'm not doing anything else in the background, I, I can usually get through one cycle in about a minute. Or, sorry, in nine minutes. It takes me nine minutes to do one cycle of gameplay on this, even on the highest speed. But, uh, yeah, still totally worth it. We're up to 74 dupes inside the base, another 6 in rockets, so yeah, 80 dupes. Uh, I'm going to stop it here because uh, adding more dupes just takes too long. Between the last video and this one, the amount of dupes, it took, adding all the dupes, it took me, uh, say it in real time, uh, I managed to rewatch the first two seasons of The Wire. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I could probably get up to 100, but I don't think there's, there's only three seasons left in The Wire, so I don't think I'd get there. But hey, it's all in the game. It's all in the game. Now, uh, I did a few little bits of filming in the, the background of little projects I put together, like this one here and well, this one down here, but honestly nothing too exciting, so I just thought I'd skimp over these. All I did was stuck in a gas pump here to take advantage of this infectious polluted oxygen vent, and that oxygen from there is combined with uh, the off-gassing polluted dirt, which honestly doesn't off-gas that much. Thrown in with a few morbs, and uh, all the polluted oxygen from those two feed all the way up to the top of the map and get fed into my rocketry system. Of course, me being me, I didn't notice for about, you know, 10 cycles or so that all this polluted oxygen I was sending up was being filtered out by the, the filter I put in place to pre prevent anything non-oxygen from getting in there, and polluted oxygen didn't count as oxygen, so I, I was actually dumping it into space originally, but I've rejigged the gas filter now and it will, it'll handle both oxygen and polluted oxygen. It's only set to filter out hydrogen. But uh, yeah, that was pretty much the only things I installed. Yeah. I just want to cover some of the, the fun stuff that just, some of the, the curveballs this game throws at you as you get to, well, late game and some of the weird things that can happen. Oh, and uh, one thing on polluted dirt, it doesn't off-gas an awful lot. You really need an awful lot of it in one spot before it off-gasses a reasonable amount. So it takes a long time for one of these to spin up. It might be an idea to run a, a conveyor belt system, just like a sort of zigzagging back and forth and have that off-gas. I don't know, I haven't tested it, but that would... That, I believe I've seen people doing that with slime. I've an idea. If you want to harvest polluted dirt for oxygen, though, honestly, I don't think that's a really good use for this stuff, unless you're really trying for a lot of dupes. Uh, the biggest curveball this game threw at me, just uh, end game, just one of the big ones was uh, these water sieves. I'm running them on uh, regulars. Now I switched to regular a while back because I was running out of filtration medium. What have I got left? Uh, yeah, I got 261 kilos of sand. So all I did was I switched this to, uh, you know put regolith in it, grand, but it's very hot regolith because they're taking it out of the bottom of the rocket silos. But this was all working out fine until I made the stupid mi mistake of uh, removing the carbon dioxide gas that was over here. I, uh, I've got, I had two pockets, of, two big pockets of carbon dioxide gas in my base, one over this side, one over this side. So I installed a, a gas pump, I installed a filter, I sent all the carbon dioxide over here to the carbon skimmer. I was going to send it down to the oil biome, but you know what, that, that's, that's got plenty of carbon dioxide. But I did the same this side, and then, uh, because what was happening was my dupes would come down here, stand in front of these to fill them, when, you know, they would out-time the auto-sweeper. So they'd stand around here, and they'd be standing around in low-oxygen environments, and I was like, well, that's bad for them. Let's, uh, you know, so I put in a gas pump, and I removed the carbon dioxide. Only uh, I made it, I, I didn't think of it quite, ugh. If you look at carbon dioxide, it has a thermal conductivity of 0 0.015. Uh, that's about the same as a... That's actually better than an insulated tile made of igneous rock. This stuff is basically insulation as a gas. Oxygen, on the other hand, has, well, much higher thermal conductivity. Actually, not a huge amount higher, but still higher thermal conductivity. So the moment I switched out the carbon dioxide for oxygen, my dupes would come down here, fill these up, and then immediately start getting scalded. <laughs> Turns out these uh, water sieves were actually giving off enough heat to actually scald my, my my dupes. In fact, one of them got scalded all the way down to 20 hit points out of 100. Sorry, LTL King, but don't worry, don't worry. I installed a, a triage cot and got everyone healed back up again. But uh, the first thing I did after that was I disabled the gas pump here so that the carbon dioxide could accumulate, so that the carbon dioxide can uh, smother these in its loving embrace and make sure that they don't turn this entire place into an absolute sauna. This place was, well, yeah, ridiculously hot. Hot enough to scald dupes quite badly. And now I just did a little... Uh, I've automated this so that the regolith has dropped here into an insulated storage bin and dumped into the water sieves. Yeah, just one of those weird little quirks. One of those little curveballs the game will always throw at you. Now, uh, we're up to 80 dupes, and that's that's where I'm stopping. But I'm going to include the save game map. 
So if anyone else wants to take this map and see if they can't, you know, get it up to 100 dupes, you can. This is a perfectly legit save. There's no exploits going on. I didn't mass produce morbs. I didn't, you know, use infinite food sources. Everything is ground out the hard way. Oh, and uh, another little wonderful curveball the game threw me. Uh, let's see. Let's grab a slickster here. Where is... Yep. Yeah. Long-haired larva. It turns out if you have a, the body temperature of your slickster at 60 degrees or lower, between 20 to 60 degrees, the larva, the long-haired larva egg chances go up. You know those ones that breathe oxygen? Yeah, and I had set this originally to 55, so these started laying lots of long-haired larva, which don't get killed in my icebox because it doesn't go that cold. Namely because, oh yeah, where is it? Yeah, there's one right there. Uh, yeah, they can survive up to minus five degrees. And because I, of course, did not plan for this or even think of it, that's just water in there, so I can't even chill them then that far, or I'll turn that into an ice block. Oops. But yeah, I ended up with lots and lots of long-haired larvae that I had to manually uh, evolve because of the problems I was having. So let's just uh, queue up some uh, removals there. Now, as for the... Um, oops. What did I hit there? Yeah, I think I hit something in the background. The game is, uh, as you can imagine, a little chuggish. <laughs> oh my god. It's a slideshow. It's even as bad when I'm not recording, I swear. It is just... Uh, very slow to do anything. Now, if we look at this, uh, if we look at this room here, you'll see this is the breeding room. Yeah, there's 500 critters in there. About 60 of those critters are actually still alive. Um, once I uh, I call all the live critters out of there, it'll stabilize at about 440 eggs. Uh, so 440 divided by 20, that's about 22 eggs. 22 eggs a cycle end up in here. That's how much eggs I'm producing from all the slicksters. Oh yes, yeah, so I should probably point out. This is going to be less about building and more about just reveling in the stupidity of this base. Um, yeah, so th there's 22 eggs a cycle coming in here. Each egg weighs 2 kilos, so it's 44 kilos of eggs ending up in here. But more interestingly, uh, if we actually check out, say, a slickster larva. Slickster larvae are, weigh 50 kilos, so that 2 kilo egg turns into a 50 kilo uh, critter. Uh, it has a, a specific heat capacity of about 3.4, a bit lower than that of water. But you would imagine I'm producing 22 of them. So I'm producing, I say, about a ton of water in terms of mass. That, that's about how much I have to cool down. So I have to cool down a ton of water from whatever it starts at. That temperature there, it's... Yeah, so they start at about 90 degrees. And then when they, they're in here, they start to actually chill out. So I have to cool down about a ton of water by 50 degrees every cycle. Just, that's the sheer amount of critters that are actually going through there, which I find kind of ridiculous and was a little bit hard to balance. Um... Oh, and this, this, all of these slickster farms, all of them here. Uh, yeah, there was... The weird thing is, slicksters, when you first encounter them, you think, okay, great, I can use those slicksters to create oil. But you can't, they're terrible at producing oil. All of these slicksters, uh, of which I'll remind you, there is 168 slicksters in total in all of these ranches. Uh, now, my normal oil production is about 6.7 kilos tops, that's about where I'll get to, but I'm running 9.4 kilos at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting about 2 kilos of crude oil out of my slicksters. I had to build 168 slicksters, or I had to ranch 168 slicksters to get 2 kilos of crude oil. If I didn't ranch these and instead left them wild, I would need 5 times as many. Which would be rip frame rate. Also, you can't stack them all on one tile. They, it interferes with their ability to produce stuff. So I'm not sure what's more impressive. The fact that I've managed... It, it takes this many slicksters to make this much crude oil. Or the fact that I've actually managed to feed this many slicksters to keep them producing that much crude oil. And uh, these, uh, these hungry little buggers, they're actually eating all the carbon from the carbon sinks at the top of the map. As you'll see here, this is the this gas pipe here going along the top. That's the uh, the carbon dioxide outflow from the power plant. So I'm actually just eating almost everything. There's a little bit of carbon dioxide that I'm not being, is not being consumed by the slicksters, but we've actually, based on the, the numbers I crunched, it actually worked out just about right. I've got a little bit of excess, which I, I always prefer to have a little bit of excess. Actually, yeah, I, I have to pretty much keep this paused all the time, otherwise it just turns into a slideshow. <laughs> anyway, yes, this monstrosity. I, uh... I restricted the pathing on most of the dupes. Only a few dupes can actually access the farming areas. And um, when I say a few dupes, actually, let's let's check out a few dupes. Um, yeah, so... Where is it? 
yeah, we've got all your regular dupes here. There's your beasties, your all the uh, the named dupes. I think we stopped somewhere around. Yeah, here is. Ah, uh, yes, Roland Ireland. You sent me in a map that I have to do a base living episode on, and uh, yeah, I put your name in here now because, and I know I haven't done the base tour, but yeah, you, you got a dupe. Uh, so yeah, we got beasties, beasties. We, I just basically released a whole bunch of beasties. I have 19 ranchers just to take care of all of those. Then I created a bunch of dogs body outs. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's about ten of them on top of uh, the four or so I had before. And their only job is to go around and harvest the crops on the outside of the map. Yeah, this, this kind of got a little bit crazy a little bit too fast. Now, let's just check on the rocketry section because... It's actually got to the point where I'm I'm just about producing enough hydrogen to feed all my rocketry system. Uh, I literally have so many dupes that the amount of oxygen they're consuming produces enough hydrogen to actually keep all my rockets pretty much out and about all the time. I haven't seen any stallings in the last while. Uh, also, as well as that, here is the, the, the leftover stuff in the bottom of the silos. Now, these ones are pretty infrequently launched. These are the ones going all the way to the end of the map. As you can see, I've got lots of self-contained universes and double helix model spiral things. Basically a whole bunch of massive amounts of decor. Actually, let's check out the decor overlay because they give off decor even when they're not. <laughs> yes, the bottom of my rocket silos are absolutely amazing decor areas. I, I find that kind of hilarious. But uh, I think the craziest one is this one over here, which is just, let's see. Yeah, there, there's all the, the stuff it's brought back. Just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Like, look at the amount of uh, strange bricks and mangled saxophone, wrist, wristwatches, everything. Yeah, there needs to be some way to harvest those automatically because there is no way I am actually putting out uh, pedestals for those things. Just n not a chance. Now, uh, just for a bit of fun, I put a, a single tile of insulation below all of these just to see how hot it would get. Uh, yeah, 2,500 degrees is about the hottest I've seen it get up to. But if you're looking to melt some metals, let's say, you could put some tiles beneath these to, to melt them. This one ended up the hottest, of course, because this, this rocket has the shortest turnaround. It's sent to the closest planetary ring, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's working out perfectly. Oh, though we'll see how this all works out in the, the newer maps, or the new updates, because supposedly the planets have a, a regeneration rate of how much material they'll generate. Now, I don't know if it changes depending on how far you go out, but it's basically going to make the closer planets much less valuable. And the further planets away, if it takes you longer to get there, they'll have more time to regenerate. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it all works out and all, how it all plays out in the end. Um, yeah, I had to actually cut down on the amount of voles I had. What did I set it to at the end? I think it was 15. Yeah, so they had to 15 critters in the end because they kept, you know, occasionally starving a bit. And uh, yeah, I, I thought I would get an awful lot more meat out of these shovels than I thought than I than I actually did in the end. Uh, what have we got in here? 26 critters. So say you get about one and a quarter eggs a cycle, one and a quarter. So that's uh, say 25. So there's, I'm getting about enough meat out of this to feed 25 dupes. That's all I'm getting for all the regulars I'm throwing into it. I mean, that's that's pretty good on a normal size when you're doing a, a normal base. I mean, that 25 dupes is 25 dupes worth of meat is great. Just uh, when it got to this size, I couldn't really find a way to expand this anymore. Without like, this is my regular harvesting slash carbon dioxide harvesting area, and it's taking up over half the map. Uh, kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, the electrolyzer is like. Let's check out one of the electrolyzers down here. Just uh, yeah, this one here. This is probably the most used one. It's the bottom electrolyzer. Yeah. This just keeps constantly churning. I don't think this actually has ever had a chance to overpressurize in... Uh, I don't know even how long. This thing is pretty much... It's three kilos of oxygen per second. Actually, let's have a, a quick glance at the reports. I don't want to go too much in detail into these because uh, reports are just numbers. But uh, let's see. Oxygen generation for the last cycle. 3,500 kilos of oxygen. <laughs> Power generation, the only numbers that really matter are I'm actually consuming three times as much power as I'm producing and most of my power is wasted because, well, yeah, that's how many of them are actually operational. Uh, that is just a stupendous amount of power. Uh, yeah, My advice on sour gas boiling is it's complete overkill. It really is. Uh, I This is producing three times as much power as I need. And this is on a map that only has two oil wells. Though, in all fairness, I've almost got a third, considering that, uh, considering the amount of slicksters I'm running. Yes, yes, think about it. All of these slicksters, all of them combined, are not producing as much oil as one oil well. <laughs> that's probably a better way of thinking it. The amount of oil you get out of slicksters, that's just a waste product, really. Well, except, except if you go stupendously large. Uh, one second.
Yeah, I just wanted to stop all that uh, combat noises. It was kind of getting in the way of uh, doing the video. Now, that's going to cover most of the actual changes around the base at the end. And now the rest of this video is basically just a, a bit of a thank you and uh, some additional information for the, the people who have helped out in these videos over... Oh, I don't even know how long this has been going on for now. Three, five months at this point? Uh, I can't remember. This has been a, a hell of a lot of fun, though. I just want to thank all the people who've given helpful suggestions. Like, just some of the suggestions I've gotten have been so useful at actually improving my base play. I used to think I was a decent player, but then you s some of the ideas people come up with, like, um... Okay, uh, just uh, straight up that, uh, that that design for replicating the, the Slicksters. I had... Uh, I stole that design off someone else, modified it slightly for my needs, and implemented it. Uh, another one is... Where is it? Uh, this is one I want to test on my next playthrough. This was a suggestion in one of the comments, was... These automatic dispensers. Uh, they said, don't bother using these, uh, oh, what is it, conveyor loaders? Just, yeah, don't bother. I, I've got conveyor loaders all through here. And their advice was, instead, just use automatic dispensers. And then all you would do is say, I will just say, have an automatic dispenser right here. It would spit its regular out to this side. Then this conveyor would pick it up and dump it into the next automatic dispenser. And you just daisy chain them along. And this gives you two advantages. One, you can dump, like, the auto sweeper can pick up the maximum amount of resources possible and dump it into the conveyor, uh, the automatic dispenser. So you'll actually reduce the amount of actions it takes for them to clean an area and dump it into the dispenser. Uh, I know the longer it gets, the less in efficient it becomes in comparison to uh, conveyor rails, but because conveyor rails can only carry 20 kilos uh, per tick per second, it's, you would have to make it, even the entire length of the map, these would pro it'd probably be still more efficient. As well as that, I've just tested it there right now, and they do not interfere with your space scanners. So one of these that the, can be placed right beside your space scanners won't cause any interference at all, meaning you can just dump a enormous amounts of regolith across the map. I've had so many helpful suggestions like this from people when I've been playing this game. Just, just so many. And uh, same with the, the Discord and all that. They've all had nice little fun suggestions, bills, screenshots, pictures. And I have shamelessly stolen so many of them. So many that I can't even remember who to give credit to anymore. I apologize. Uh... A blanket thank you to everyone who has shared so much of the, the stuff that makes this game so much fun to play. Oh, which reminds me. Uh, the YouTube money came through and I made enough money to actually afford a nice bottle of whiskey. Which I am now going to have a nice drink of. Like I said, we, we've stopped doing designs for the moment. Uh, yeah, so I managed to afford a nice bottle of whiskey and a few bars of dark chocolate. Which I am going to enjoy while I go through the rest of the video. So yes, if you're here for any more design stuff, yeah, that, that's not happening. Tough. Now, uh, some people might say making about 70 or so videos is about 30 or 40 minutes a piece to, make a, to earn a bottle of whiskey and some uh, chocolate is an inefficient use of your time. And you would be right, but this tastes super sweet. Mm. Actually, it's more of a smoky whiskey. I prefer the smoky ones, but whatever. You, you, you get the message. Now, uh, another thing, another great suggestion people gave was uh, this one here. This, uh, I never thought of doing this. They, they, they pointed out just, uh, yeah, use the, a little blob of oil along here and let the regolith that falls down on these cool down everything. No cooling loops required, no nothing. True, you need space metal, but it, that wasn't a problem at the time. This is another design I have totally stolen. I've even moved these back a bit. These three scanners here actually provide enough uh, warning. Yeah, 39 seconds. It takes 38.4 seconds for a door to close. So this little chunk of this chunk of base here basically gives me all the scanner quality I need to make sure that my doors open and close in time, which is all you really want. Uh, as well as that, because the bunker doors never there's no actual closing of bunker doors above them. These uh, scanners never actually lose scanner quality. There's no things opening and then closing or anything like that. This just simplified things down to the point where I don't have to care, which is exactly the way I like things. So yeah, for the minimal amount of sky quality sky you lose and the minimum amount of space it takes up. Thanks everyone for the suggestions on all of these. Now, um, oh, one second. Actually, yeah, let's check out something sort of hypnotic, or something. I, I, it's something I've actually stared at while I was waiting for dupes. Y you end up uh, finding things to do or stare at, and it's basically this uh, this carbon sink right here. I will admit I have probably spent a little bit too much time just staring at the gases flowing up, and that nice. It, they really nail down the the gas flow, uh, the the gas display mechanics. You can actually tell where it's a, there's a thicker layer of carbon dioxide and where there's a not a thicker layer of carbon dioxide. And it's, I still miss that one. Yeah, this here. Uh, people have mentioned I've left that mesh tile there and stuff. Uh, 
it doesn't really matter. Any liquid carbon dioxide that falls there is basically doomed because the regolith coming through here, uh, it basically interacts with it and immediately off gases it again. I couldn't figure out some way of getting this out without without wasting carbon dioxide. In the end, I thought maybe if I actually ran the two of them, um, actually, you know, there's, there's plenty of things I could have tried, but yeah, you know, maybe if I move them, actually, I can move them down a time. You know, no, no, not going to worry about that now. The base is done. It is finished. No matter how hypnotic that is, uh, I, I'm not getting involved in any more optimizations here. You also notice there's giant blocks of the map that have been actually walled in. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, <laughs> That was not a lot of fun. Trying to optimize this game for F for uh, FPS, yeah, it's just really boring, to be honest. It's one of those things I really hope they work on is optimization, just for people who like to make ridiculously large bases. I mean, we all do. This is the this is the final death of any base. No matter what you do, at some point your base will hit the point where it just can't do anything else. You're just going to actually run into the FPS wall and everything will fall apart. Oh well, say la vie. Uh, yeah. Let's have uh, one last look here at the core base. Still chugging along. Let's see, where is it? Oh, keep going. Oh, okay, one second. It's really hard to do this. There. So that's pretty much the core base there, with our many, many dupes running along, with a bit of dance parties going on. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone again for the help on this map. I don't think I ever would have pushed myself this far or pushed the game engine this far if it hadn't been for all the, the help from everyone. So, next up I'll be doing a, a base-loving video for uh, the last of the Quality of Life Mark 3s. If you have any maps from Quality of Life Mark 3 that, uh, that you'd like to share, doesn't matter if it's got if it's a late game base or an early game base, if you've only got one design in it you want to share, whatever it is, just send it over the email addresses in the About section. And uh, I'd like to get up a few base tours. I'm sure people have got some bases they'd like to share now the Quality of Life Mark 3 is coming to an end, because quality for the new upgrade everything is going to change. Everything is going to be hugely different. Crops can now be planted on uh, natural tiles, which means if you just drop a seed on, say, some frozen dirt, or some dirt, or some... you can melt phosphorite and let that solidify. You can basically make your own wild farms, which is going to make making food, well, an awful lot simpler. Making a base like this, for example, would be an awful lot simpler. It'd just be an awful lot of natural farm tiles left around the place. So that's going to change everything hugely. The whole rocketry system has changed in terms of uh, getting re uh, regenerating resources. Uh, there's just so many things have changed. The new biomes, new everything. Really looking forward to playing around with that, but it basically killed. Any map before Quality of Life Mark III is basically, yeah, good luck. It's not going to work. The wheeze wart change, uh, they only give out about a quarter of the cooling. So these uh, plug sockets down here in the bottom left, the ice, the battery boxes running on wheeze warts. Yeah, you're going to need to put in four wheeze warts instead, which honestly, not the end of the world. Uh, I don't really use much the wheeze warts much for industrial cooling. I usually just use them for battery boxes and plug sockets. Having to put in three and four instead of three not going to be a big deal for me. Though I know for some people that's going to hurt their playstyle quite a bit. Oh, I completely forgot. That was one other thing I found was uh, sort of hilarious. Was uh, the eggshells? I have over two tons of eggshells have accumulated since I started up those fixture farms. Yeah, I don't, I'm not actually making any steel anymore because I don't need it, but I've managed to accumulate over two tons of eggshells, which at the same time, still kind of hilarious. Now, um, yep, yeah. like I said, last last video on this map, save game is included if you want to actually fire it up and have a bit of a play around with it. Uh, extra big thank you to LTL King for doing all the indexes. He, he, he takes care of all the indexing on all these maps, so any indexes you found below the maps, yep, yeah, he sorted them out. Thanks again, uh, LTL. Uh, also, a big thank you, at, a big shout out to Hydra as well. They convinced me to actually put up the Discord, and they're probably managing it a lot better than I am. I basically put them in charge of it because they were very motivated. And uh, yeah, I haven't been really on it much in the last week because I've been basically trying to hammer through this map as much as possible. But uh, I'll be around, for, uh, around some more now. Uh, though, actually, I'll probably burn an awful lot of time on the new update. Oh, I still gotta get those base loving videos out. But uh, anyway. So, we'll just uh, zoom out and have one last look at the map for, uh, for the end. And uh, a big cheers and thank you to everyone again for all the help on getting this, uh, this sucker up and running. Uh, yeah, it's not the cleanest base, it's not the nicest base, but it works, and there's a lot of dupes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, all the videos that led up to it, and uh, good luck.